sure what's going on. Why can't I share my screen? Your screen share will will never be stored locally or remote. What's this? Can you see um, my screen? I think uh, you're already sharing the screen. Yes. Okay. Okay. So sorry if uh, I uh, I had to log out from my other login. So if anyone wants to say something, just uh, raise your hand and I will. Uh, I will uh, let you speak, okay? Because I I don't see your chat and uh, uh, I don't see your chat, okay? So one announcement, quiz three. Uh, doctor, we cannot see your screen anymore. I don't know what's going on. Why can't I share? Share screen. You can see my screen, right? Yes, doctor. Yes. Okay, sorry for this. Um, so uh, Monday, twenty second, right? Of February. Covers uh, normal distribution. Uh, Table doctor? Usage. Do you hear me, doctor? Yes. I hear you. Uh, in Monday, we have a midterm in the That's lecture right. time. In the lecture time. So is it fine? What lecture time? Until 2.30. Until 2.30. That's illegal. You have a lecture. You cannot have a midterm at the same time of a lecture. Doctor, I told the other doctor, but he doesn't want to listen. No, this is illegal. Who's that? Who's that professor from the college? Yeah, from uh, uh, he's from mechanical engineering, Sadak Sasi. He cannot do this. No, he cannot do this. I will uh, send okay. an email to the to the uh, associate dean. You know, when you cannot put an exam on the time of the lecture of other uh, of other professors. Okay, look, I will give you his anyway. email and the details by email. I will send you an email. No, I will not communicate with him. I will communicate with the college. I, I, okay. I have nothing to do with him. Yet. Okay. okay, thank you. Anyhow, I, yani, the quiz will be at the end, around 3 o'clock. Not, uh, okay. Doctor? That's, um, yes. I remember that in the, uh, a few weeks ago, you said we will solve uh, one midterm and, uh, before the, before the yes. midterm. I we, did we not communicate with you. You and then I will ask Joy to count all the cases and I will let you know. It will be the midterm will be exactly the same day. If we do not find any other slot, you can do the midterm at the slot of the uh, class during the class timing. You should be free during the class timing, so you can take the the quiz uh, the midterm during the class timing. The midterm is one and a half hour. Okay. So. Last time we did normal distribution. And we mentioned that f of x of the normal distribution is one over square root of two by sigma squared e to the minus x minus mu squared over two sigma squared. And where mu is the mean and sigma squared is the variance and we said one issue with the normal distribution is that f of x which is probability of x less than or equal to x is not available in closed form And that's why we defined the standard normal. Distribution Z 
for which mu is zero and sigma squared is one. And we show that using the tables, we can uh, find phi of z, which is probability of z less than or equal to z. So we can find the probabilities if the normal distribution that we are dealing with is a standard, a standard normal distribution. So the issue is now, the issue is, what about if mu is not zero or sigma square is not one? How can use the tables? How can we use the tables if mu is not zero and sigma square is not one? Because we, ha we have one table for the normal distribution. And to use the table, my mean has to be zero and my variance has to be one. So in that case, we standardize the normal distribution. How do we standardize the normal distribution? This is what our next uh, lemma or our next uh, if x is a random a normal random variable with mean mu and variance sigma square then if we do x minus mu over sigma this will be a standard normal So if I have any normal distribution, if I take that normal distribution, I subtract the mean from it and I divide it by the standard deviation, I divide it by sigma, I will convert my random, my normal distribution, regular norm, normal distribution to a standard normal. So this will convert our normal distribution to a standard normal distribution which is which is z so what does that mean let's take an example um, take this like suppose Current measurement, the current measurement in a wire has a normal distribution with u equals ten. Sigma equals two milliampere. So in this circuit, the uh, the current value is random; it keeps fluctuating. But we know from uh, our experience that the value of the current follows the normal distribution, the mean of which is ten, and the var the standard deviation is two. And the question is. What is the probability that the current is between nine and eleven milliampere? So basically, what this question means, I'm telling you, I have a random variable, x that is normal, it has a mean of 10, it has a variance of 4, 
because sigma is two, so sigma squared is four. And I'm asking you, what is the probability that X is between? Let me do like a simpler one, then I will do the in-between. Uh, what is the probability that the current is? Less than 11 milliampere. So I'm asking, what's the probability that X is less than or equal, whatever, 11 milliampere? What's the probability that X is less than 11? We don't have table to find this, this probability. So what do we need? We need to use this relation. So what we will say, we know that if I can do this, please see what I'm saying. So probability of X, less than 11 is the same as if I say X minus 10, less than 11 minus 10, right? I can subtract 10 from both sides, right? I can also divide X minus 10 over two, less than or equal 11 minus 10 over, over two. So now what is this? I know that if I have a normal distribution, I subtract its mean and divide it by its standard deviation, I will get Z. So this is basically Z. And this is 11 minus N is one, one over two is one over two. So what this means is probability of X less than 11 is equivalent to probability of Z less than 0.5. So now I go to the table. Let's go to the table. Where is my, uh, oh, sorry, E-Eng, Wiley, where is Wiley? Okay, book. I go to the table, I find the probability of Z. I go to the, uh, tables at the end, yes, no, no. I want probability of Z less than 0.5, so I go to the table with the positive. This is 0.5, so 0 0.691462, 0.691462. Can you see the What's going on today? Not yet. Know. Not sure why it's not stable. You can see my screen now, right? Yeah, we can see it now. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, to find the probability of X to be less than 11, using this relation that we just derived, we found the equivalent probability for Z, and then we used, we used the table. Now I can ask you also, what is probability of X greater than or equal to eight? Again, I would use the same trick, so this is X minus 10 greater than or equal 8 minus 10. And then probability of X minus 10 over 2 greater than or equal minus 2 over 2. So this is Z greater than or equal to minus 1. So again, I go to my, what's the root that X is greater than, okay, before sharing. What's the root the table gives me? The probability that X less than or equal. So I have to use the complement. So this is probability of Z less than or equal to minus, to minus one. So I go to the table. What's the probability that X less than minus one? Where is minus one? This is minus one. Be careful, minus one. So I have to, to do the last one. So minus, this is minus one. I have to go all the way to the end. 
So this is 0 0.158655, 0 0.158655. And so on. So every time you have a question, you need to, to standardize. So, Omar, go ahead. It shouldn't be 1 minus 0 0.155. Yes, you're right. Thank you. Which is whatever. Okay, thank you. So, doctor? Yes. We make it 1 minus uh, probability of Z uh, less than or equal minus 1 because the highest value is 1, right? Sorry, the highest value is minus 1. No, because what I got from the table is this, and I know my answer is one minus that value. So I'm just following what uh, the previous step. No, the table I mean like, yeah, go ahead. Uh, my question, question is why, why? Then, yes, mm -hmm. ask your question. My, my question is why did it, uh, why didn't we find when Z greater than or equal minus one? Why did we convert it into one minus probability of Z less than or equal minus one. Because the table does not give me probability of Z greater than something. It just gives me probability of Z less than something. Ah, okay, thank you. Okay. So if we face a normal distribution that is not standard, just use the relation z equals x minus mu over sigma to standardize it. Okay, let me see if I have Yeah, also, if you can, what's the probability? I can ask what's the probability that X is between 9 and 11. So you can standardize both sides. So this is the same as 9 minus 10. Less than or equal to X minus 10, less than or equal 11 minus 10. And then you can by 2 by 2 by 2, then it's the same as probability minus 0 0.5 less than or equal to z, less than or equal to, to 0 0.5. So this is simply probability of z less than 0 0.5 minus probability of z less than or equal to minus 0 0.5. So we go to the table, we found already probability of z less than 0 0.5, it's 0.6914. And you go to the table to find the probability of z less than minus less than minus 0 0.5. Again, minus 0 0.5, you have to go all the way to the end. 0 0.3085. 0 0.3085. Okay. So Whenever you face a normal distribution that is not standard, just standardize it using this, this relation. And this is how can we use the table for any problem that encounters uh, a non-standard normal uh, distribution. But what's beautiful about the normal distribution also is normal distribution can be used to approximate both binomial and Poisson distributions.
under certain conditions. Which is, for example, so for binomial, if mb is greater than 5 and n times 1 minus b is greater than 5, I can do the approximation. For Poisson, I can use this approximation if lambda is greater than, than 5. Why is this important? Let's see an example. If you recall, the, when we did the binomial distribution, we did this uh, problem about sending bits. Assume we are sending 16 million bits. over a channel. And the probability of error in each transmission is 10 to the minus 5. And the question is, what is the probability that 150 or fewer errors occur? So here I have a binomial distribution because I have fixed number of transmission, 16 million, so n. My number of ex uh, experiments is 16 million, 16 times 10 to the 6. I have the probability of error in each transmission. P is 10 to the minus 5. And we want the probability that X is less than or equal to 150. So if we want to use the binomial distribution, this is summation from I equals 0 to 150 n over x, so 16 i, p to the i, 10 to the minus 5 to the i, and then 1 minus 10 to the minus 5 minus p, so uh, 16 times 10 to the 6 minus i. Is this easy to calculate? No. As you can see, this is this is very complicated. So you have some summation from i equals zero to 150, and you need to do this combination: 16 million factorial over 16 million uh, minus one factorial divided by one factorial times 10 to the minus five times one minus 10 to the minus five, 16 million minus i. So this is very complicated. So let's check this condition. Is this condition? What's MP? N times P is 16 to the 6 times 10 to the minus 5, which is, this is 10, so 160. 160 is greater than 5. So the, the first condition is good for the approximation. What's N times 1 minus P? N times 1 minus P is 16 times 10 to the 6 times 1 minus 10 to the minus 5. So again, this is very much greater than 5. This is almost 1 times 16 million. So this is much greater than, than 5. So in this case, we can use we can use the normal distribution to approximate the binomial distribution.
How do we do this? Simply, we just assume, we just standardize the normal distribution. We standardize the normal distribution using the mean and variance of binomial. What does this mean? So we are interested in probability of X less than or equal 150, right? What we will do, we will just say, okay, this is equivalent to probability of X minus What's the mean of binomial? Mean of this binomial that, that we are dealing with, MB, right, in general. What's the standard deviation of the, of the binomial is MB times MSB, and then This is less than or equal to X minus NP is what? N times B is 160 over square root of MP, which is 160 times 1 minus 10 to the minus to the minus 5. And this is? Following our standardization formula, this is simply Z, and we are just uh, calculating probability of Z less than or equal minus point. If you calculate this, this is uh, X is 50, 150, sorry. Minus point. Seven five one zero four, and from the table, if you go to the table, you will find that this is point two two six three. So basically, what we did, somebody gave us a, a problem using binomial distribution, which is very complicated. If we face a complicated problem with binomial or with Poisson we can always use the normal distribution to, to get an approximate solution, not an exact solution, an approximate solution. But we need to check two conditions before you, you do the approximation. You need to check if those two conditions. You need to check if your n times b is greater than 5 and n times 1 minus b is greater than five. If the condition is satisfied, you can use the normal distribution. How do we know, use the normal distribution? We just, like we did with standardization, he's asking what's the probability that X less than or equal to 150. So I will assume probability of X less than or equal to 150. And then I subtract the mean, mean of binomial, and I divide by sigma of binomial. And then I substitute the numbers and I'll just use the, the Z table to, to get the, the, uh, the results. One note, which is, we use in this approximation, We use a continuity, uh, what we call continuity correction factor. So we say probability of X less than or equal to X that is asking about. We say that we add 
correction factor of 0.5 and then we do our standardization so z less than or equal x plus 0.5 minus mp over square root of mp times 1 minus 1 minus p and this will be the formula that we will be using to approximate the the binomial distribution by by uh, the normal distribution. We do the same for for uh, for Poisson. We do the same for Poisson if lambda is greater than than five. How do we do that? Just do an example. Given a Poisson distribution with lambda equals six. What is the probability that X is uh, less than or equal to six? You know, less than or equal to, uh, let's pick another example, let's say, because lambda is six, let's say four. So Poisson, how is Poisson? How does it work? So for Poisson, probability of x less than or equal to four is just probability of x equals zero plus probability of x equals one plus probability of x equals two plus probability of x equals three plus probability of x equals four, right? Which is summation from I equals zero to four. Lambda to the X to the I. Uh, no, it's uh, what was the condition? E to the lambda, lambda to the X over X factorial, sir. Huh? E to the, what was the, anyone remembers the equation for Boisson? I can get it really quick. No, I don't remember. I see like total silence here today. Not sure why. Okay, for Poisson, e to the minus lambda, lambda to the x, e, e to the minus. Uh, lambda, which is 6, then 6 to the i over i factorial. And you have to do this for all, for all of them. Which is doable, but we can use here, we can use normal approximation as lambda equals 6, greater than 5. If lambda is greater than 5, we can use the normal approximation. So how do we do it? Say probability of x less than or equal to four is probability of x. What's the mean for Poisson? Mean for Poisson is lambda, and the standard deviation is, uh, is lambda also, right? So less than or equal to four minus lambda, which is six over square root of, of six. So this is probability of Z less than or equal to minus two over square root of, of six. You calculate this and then you go to the tables and you get your 
your value. So basically, we can use the normal distribution to approximate both the Poisson and the binomial under certain conditions. We can use it to approximate Poisson if lambda is greater than five. Of course, if you if you calculate this value and you calculate this value, they will not give you exactly the same answer because this is this is an approximation. This is not an an exact solution and we should be using it only if if the equation is is very hard to calculate like in the binomial in the binomial example uh, example above okay let me see if i am in math in uh, side the okay I will get you. Please get into your blackboard so that you can check in your uh, your attendance. I'm getting to your Okay, please check in your attendance. You have uh, three minutes started already before we uh, continue with our with our lecture. Doctor, there is a question in the chat regarding to the quiz, uh, the midterm. Um, every time you ask me about the midterm, I told you I will announce it over this weekend i will uh, tell you i'm every time i tell you i will announce it over the weekend and i will tell you it's till the end of next week so whatever we cover on monday and wednesday of next week it will be in the in the midterm so basically the joint distribution is will be with us in the uh, in the midterm so today we'll finish this chapter on monday we'll start the joint distribution i think joint distribution is very very simple. We'll just take one, one or one and a half lecture, and that's it. Yeah, it's, uh, it will be in the exam. Uh, doctor, when uh, when will we um, solve past uh, exams? Uh, maybe end of next week. I'll give an uh, optional tutorial for those of you who want to attend. They can attend if uh, if you cannot. That's fine because the semester they cut it by one week, so we'll not be able to. To, uh, I'm solving some some questions in, during the lecture. I will not be able to dedicate a whole lecture. I will try. We'll see how if on Monday I can finish the whole uh, the whole chapter. Let me check how far how long is the uh, chapter on joint distribution. Mm. Yeah, we need two lectures, I guess, for the for the joint distribution. Doctor, mm. uh, regarding the quiz next Monday, do you have any idea? Uh, sorry, I mean, uh, what is it exactly included in it? Yeah, check the announcement that I wrote at the beginning of today's class. Probably you joined late. Yeah, yeah, I actually did. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so can, this is Doctor. Can you? Uh, uh, tell us uh, maybe at the end of the lecture, like how the how many questions will be in the midterm and so on, and the level of the question. You know, try. I'll try. Yeah, you keep asking about the midterm. I'll tell you, I will tell you more over the weekend. And I don't think anyone will start studying from today. And you keep asking early on about the midterm. And uh, every time I ask you, you oh, ask I'll to I'll the homework. I'll doctor. <laughs> Okay, good for you. So, exponential <laughs> distribution. The last, the last distribution that we are going to cover uh, from the families of continuous random variables is the 
exponential distribution. Exponential distribution is related to Poisson distribution that we did in the discrete domain. Related to Poisson distribution. The time between Poisson arrivals. If you recall, we said the the uh, Poisson distribution describes random arrival of uh, of events or or counts. So, for example, if you uh, are standing in front of a bank and then you are watching people arriving to the bank, right? So uh, the number of people arriving in a certain period of time, this is Poisson, it's random, right? If you are counting the number of people who are arriving to the bank, it's random. Now, if you are uh, measuring the time between arrivals, so once a person arrives, then you start your stopwatch until the second person arrives. This time is random also, right? This time follows the exponential exponential uh, distribution. So for example, time between customers arriving to a bank. Time between phone calls of service line. Distance between trees in a jungle, in a wild jungle. I hope you can read my, I'm not sure what's going on with my writing today. Okay, and so on. So all of this is uh, characterized by an exponential distribution. So now, so given a Poisson distribution, with a mean arrival of lambda greater than zero, then the time between arrivals is Exponential with f of x as lambda e to the minus lambda x, where x is between zero and and infinity. So the BDF, the probability density function of exponential distribution is given by lambda e to the minus to the minus lambda x, where lambda is the same. So if you tell me I have uh, a Poisson distribution for the number of customers arriving to a bank, this Poisson distribution has uh, an average lambda of six customers per hour, okay? Six customers per hour. I tell you the time between arrivals to that bank is exponential distribution with mean one over six. So the time to arrival is one over six. The average is one over six. So for exponential mu, which is expected value of x, you can show that it is one over lambda. 
and sigma squared is, which is the variance of x, you can show it's one over lambda. Okay. How can you prove this? How do you prove this? This is just integration from zero to infinity. X times lambda e to the minus lambda x, dx. Do this integration by part. You will see that the answer is, is one over, one over lambda. So one important note, in Poisson, mean and variance are the same within the lambda. In exponential, the mean and standard deviation are the same. The square root of the of the mean, the same. Within the one over lambda. Okay. And then what's f of x? Capital F of x for for the exponential distribution. How can we find it? It's integration again from minus infinity to x. F of u du. If you integrate. The BDF, you will can easily show that this is one minus e to the minus lambda x, where x is greater than greater than than zero. This is the CDF of uh, of the exponential distribution. Okay, right, let's do an example. Let me do an example. Uh, and doctor, here the f of u is uh, the first derivative of f of x, right? f of u, no, it's f of x is f of u is f of t. This is u here is a dummy variable, right? Dummy variable. So the yeah, side variable of integration is a dummy variable. Is dummy because integration of f of x dx is the same as integration of f of u du yeah yes doctor but i meant it's it's the the the, the term lambda multiplied by e to the power minus lambda x right it's the first derivative of this term is it? If you take the derivative of this, of capital F of X, you'll get small f of X. So take the derivative, one derivative of one is zero, derivative of e to the minus lambda X, lambda e to the minus lambda X, and the negative cancels, it will give you a small f of X. So if you take the derivative of capital F of X, you, you find small f of X. If you integrate small f of X, you get the capital F of X, right? Is that your question? Um, uh, let me say it in another way. What I meant is um, that the f of u du, is it the the term lambda multiplied by e to the power minus lambda x yes. or the derivative yes. of this term? No, it's exactly lambda e to the minus lambda x. In this case, you uh, just substitute. Why I used u? Because I have x here. I cannot have x as the limit. So you have to change. If you are using x sure. as the limit of the integration, you have to use the, the variable of, of the integration. So let's do an example. Let's say in, in, a, in a company, user login. Like even in Qatar University, the number of people of that are looking, for example, to uh, to Blackboard or to Banner, let's say to account is modeled as Poisson 
distribution the mean of 25 per hour. And now I can ask you, what is Uh, let's see, what's the probability that there is no logins next six minutes? Or So I'm asking about the time until the next person logs in. Telling us that number of login are postponed, then we know that. So we know that time between log in is exponential, right? with that equals 25. So now he's asking, he does, what's the property that no one will log in next? So the, you are asking about an exponential that is greater than 0.1 hour. If we are using the hours, uh, units, which is one minus probability of x less than 0.1, and which is one minus probability one minus f of 0.1. I can use the CDF right away. So this is equal one minus one minus e to the minus 25 times 0.1, and this is simply e to the minus 2.5, which is 0 0.082. <coughs> so the chances that no one will log in in the next six minutes is 0 0.06, 0 0.06, 0 0.082, sorry, 0 0.082. I can ask what is the probability that the next person to log in is between two and three minutes So probably I want probability of X less than three minutes, greater than two minutes. So I have to convert it to hours. Then this is probability of, in hour, this point 0.033, less than X, less than 0 0.05. And then you just integrate the, the BDF. So 0 0.033 to 0 0.05, and then you know lambda e to the minus lambda x, x, and then you can just integrate this. This is very simple to integrate. This is one, one five two. So the exponential exponential distribution is is very easy to deal with, but it has a very important uh, property. Abdullah, go ahead. Um, doctor, for the previous part, it says the the probability that nobody will will log in uh, within the the six minutes, right? Six minutes, yes. So the first log in is after six minutes, in seven or eight or yeah, nine. But should it, shouldn't the probability be uh, higher? Because logically, if every twenty five minutes somebody will log in, 
then why uh, then uh, who said an average 25 minutes no the, the average the average sorry the average or the mean the average is every 25 minutes. what's the average no lambda is 25 uh, arrives bell per hour our this is for Boston for our exponential mean is what mean is 1 over lambda 1 over lambda which is 1 over 25 hours uh, okay. One over twenty-five so hours is three, every two point five minutes. Somebody will answer. More or less, okay. yeah. Now yes. it's clear. Thank you. So, yes. yes, to have six minutes without login is low probability. The exponential distribution has an important property, which is lack of memory. Remember, we talked about discrete distribution that that has lack of memory, which is geometric which is the only discrete distribution that is memoryless and here the exponential distribution is the only continuous distribution that is memoryless so the exponential distribution is the only memoryless distribution among continuous random variables. Again, what's what does uh, memoryless means? It's like in this uh, in this example, I'm asking you what's the probability that nobody will log in in six minutes. So you went and wait, you were watching. After two minutes, I came to you and asked you, did anyone log uh, in? You said no, so now I ask you, what's the probability that someone will log in in uh, five minutes or four minutes? It does not matter. The two minutes that passed, it does not matter. It will not, it will not count. History does not, does not count. So how do we write this? We write it that probability of x less than t1 plus t2, given that x is greater than t1, is the same as the probability of x less than t2. So if you want to visualize this, let's assume that this is x, this is our f of x, and this is our Exponential distribution, assume that this is uh, T2, this is T1, this is T1 plus T2. So if you are standing here at this point, if you are standing here, I came to you at T1 and I ask you, what is the probability until T1 plus T2? It's the same probability as if you are standing here and you are looking at T2. What matters is the difference equals T2, one difference. equals T2. So Doctor, this uh, principle is always valid, no matter how complex the event is. If it's if it follows the exponential distribution. It, if it follows the exponential distribution, let me give a quick example. I think we have that type of example. Let's say lifetime of light bulbs is usually, I'm just coming up with this example, I remember. Lifetime of light bulbs is usually modeled by exponential distribution.
say for a certain company, the average lifetime is, let's say, uh, 1,000 hours, okay? On average, the light bulbs will live for, well, let's make it in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, not, uh, let's say it's, let's do it in uh, months, okay? Is 50 months. So, yeah, on average, this, uh, whatever, Philips, or uh, I don't know what, what light bulb companies you deal with, they live on average for 50 months, okay? So I can ask you, what is the probability that a light bulb burns in less than 10 months? If you buy one, What's the probability that x is less than or equal to 10? We know that 1 over lambda is 50, right? The average of the exponential is 1 over lambda, which means lambda is 1 over 50. So what's the probability that x is less than or equal to 10? This is f of 10, which is 1 minus e to the minus Lambda t, 10 over, over 50. Right, capital F of x is, where's capital F of x? One minus e to the minus lambda x. Sorry. Now, if I tell you, given that you had this light bulb for two years. We are after two years, I came to you and I found the light bulb is still working. And at that point of time, I asked you, what is the probability that it will burn in the next 10 months? Again, the answer is probability of x less than 10, which is f of 10 which is 1 minus e to the minus t over. t does not, does not change. Even if you had it for 10 years, even if you had it for one year, I know this might look counterintuitive to you, but uh, it's true. I mean, uh, I'm not sure if you are involved in changing light bulbs in your, in your house, but sometimes the light bulb lives for one month, sometimes one day, Sometimes 10 years. Sometimes you find some light bulbs in your house that live for 10 years. So l l l it's pure random process that is, that is uh, memoryless. Mostly 10 years, doctor. 10 years? Okay. You, know, you yeah. say you have, good, you have a lot of money, you buy good brands, and it seems. Oh, like you don't have to replace. Yeah, Omar, I heard the point, uh, lambda is one over 50. I didn't get that part. I'm telling you the average is in the question. What's the average? Uh, 50. 50. I'm telling you the average of the distribution is 50. And what's the average of the exponential distribution? Oh, okay, okay. One over lambda is, I'm telling you one over lambda is 50. So lambda is one over, one over uh, 50. Okay. 
طيب so uh, let me see if I have another example uh, it seems I don't so with this we uh, we finish what we want to cover in this in this uh, current uh, chapter uh, for the midterm I know you are asking about the midterm let me check if I go back to 2000, uh, the last time I told this was 2018, I guess. Let me see if I still have my midterm. Mails, exams, midterm. Okay, let's see. Oh, this midterm exam too. What's this? Speaker exam two. Uh, I will, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's, uh, I cannot just find it now. Uh, doctor, yes. could you upload it on the blackboard so we can practice I will. for the midterm? I will, for sure. Yes, please. But midterm two, it will be one and a half hour. You will have one A4 paper formulas so you write on on that uh, sheet of paper i will not be providing any sheet for those who forget their sheets so make sure if you will start studying and it will seem that you want to start early start you preparing set, your one you four, one a4 two-sided whatever regardless of how small is the font that you can read uh, so you can have one a4 paper you will write ourselves the formula Yes, yes, I will not provide any formula sheet. Uh, what else? So it covers what we we covered is the uh, introduction. We did the counting techniques. We did the uh, discrete random variables. We did the continuous random variables and we did we'll do the joint distribution most probably the exam will have four questions things that for sure you'll have in the exam a normal distribution for using the tables for sure you'll have uh, joint distribution discrete um, usually one of the questions one question is uh, it has several small questions to measure your understanding that's almost in all subjects that I do. I usually have one question at the beginning. It has like four or five parts, small questions. I just use it yeah, to, to, to ask quick, quick questions that usually measure your, your uh, understanding. Uh, exam, yeah, uh, inshallah, will not be hard. Uh, I will do my best not to be hard, but I will. I usually, if your exam is on Monday, I won't put the exam till Saturday, probably Sunday before the exam. So I, uh, I cannot predict what uh, what I will do, but uh, usually this is the case. I will just put it one or two days before for the exam. Brahim, uh, doctor, uh, is there any MCQ questions or theory based questions? MCQ, no. Theory based, yes. And I have to have answer it by like a paragraph or something, right? Yes, I might have. Yes, I, I might have one or two, in the, especially in the first question, the, the one that I'm, I'm referring to here. Yes. Okay. Very, very have, clear. Uh, yeah, yeah. I might ask you for example, like the random. Why is, is this random? This is not random, uh, and so on. I might. Okay. So this is more or less what I have in mind. Uh, I will uh, upload. At least one example, maybe more, if I find uh, solved. 
And uh, if I don't find the solution, I will record uh, uh, a separate lecture maybe to uh, to solve, to go over uh, a solve uh, one one exam and solve it in front of you so that you have an idea what to expect in the in the exam. Hamidullah. Uh, yes, doctor. Uh, the formula need to be written by hand or computer. Okay, you just do what you want. Okay, it's up to you. It should be in in one paper, A4. Yes, one A4. You can use both sides. You can use small fonts. It's up to you. Uh, doctor, and the formula sheet, we can add whatever you want, or only formula. No formula, formula. Don't write question solutions. Even though I don't care, honestly. But yeah, if, uh, if you want to do, write anything, I'm fine. Write anything you want on the formula sheet. I'm good. Who raised the question? I, I missed uh, one hand. Oh, I trust me, doctor. Uh, doctor, about the quiz next week, do I, do I have to inform my uh, other doctor? Uh, because, because of the midterm, that has a conflict with your class. Do I have to in inform about it uh, that it's illegal or you will send an email? The... I, will not, uh, I will not send uh, an email to your other professor. I will, him, send but, an email. Uh... I will send an email to the my department head and I'm telling him that I will have a quiz. If you should uh, take an action, you should tell him I... I so I, I must I, tell him, right? Yes, if you want to tell him. But I, from my side, I have nothing to do with him. I will talk to my uh, department head and uh, he will talk to the college. But this is... Yani, nobody should uh, design an exam. You should have protested early on when they bought the exam. You can tell him I that did I, talk to you, but he did not listen to me. You have a lecture at the time of the exam. You cannot. Nobody can uh, put an exam in the time of the lecture. That's why, as I said, your midterm was scheduled in the free slot. Uh, I, I protested so twice, but he didn't any... listen to me. So if you recommend anything so that I do, I'll do it. Um, and you talk to the and you tell him if he does not respond, and you have the system or you have the department head to talk to. And this is you okay. usually if you talk, if you uh, complain to me about something that I did wrong, if I don't respond to you, you should go to my department head or the course coordinator. Yeah, okay, if that course sure. has a coordinator, yes, talk to the coordinator. Thank you so much. Sure. Okay, any other questions? I am uh, doctor. Yes. ممكن دكتور لو الواد بتاع يوم السبت على الكمبيوتر لو تأجله كمان يوم يومين لأني أنا يوم السبت خلص عندي السكرين شوت. I'm sorry. خلاص submitted أنت one day late و we'll get one. يعني we keep delaying things and we يعني we خلاص we things will accumulate. So it's just submitted أنت for you on Sunday and يعني I assigned this two weeks ago so you should have enough time. Okay. I'm doctor. Oh. Yes. بن بالنسبة للassignment. الحين أنا لما مثلاً أطلع الوقت اللي أو directions من بيتي للcenter أو جامعة قطر يطلع لي أكثر من وقت. أي واحد اختاره أي روت اعتمده. The shortest. كل كل يوم اعتمد the shortest ولا مثلاً أول يوم اعتمد the shortest واتمر نفس الروت. شلون؟ يعني لأن لأن مثلاً اليوم ممكن يكون روت 1 هو الشورتست